lifted me. I'm so glad Jesus lifted me. I'm so glad that Jesus lifted me. I'm so glad that Jesus lifted me. Singing glory, hallelujah. Jesus lifted me. Oh, I'm so glad that Jesus lifted me. I'm so glad that Jesus lifted me. I'm so glad that Jesus lifted me. Singing glory, hallelujah. Jesus lifted me. Now when I was in trouble, Jesus lifted me. When I was in trouble, Jesus lifted me. When I was in trouble, Jesus lifted me. Singing glory, hallelujah. Jesus lifted me. Satan had me bound, but Jesus lifted me. Satan had me bound, but Jesus lifted me. Satan had me bound, but Jesus lifted me. I'm singing glory, hallelujah. Jesus lifted me. Oh, I'm so glad that Jesus lifted me. I'm so glad that Jesus lifted me. I'm so glad that Jesus lifted me. Singing glory, hallelujah. Jesus lifted me. I'm so glad that Jesus lifted me. I'm so glad that Jesus lifted me. Good morning, saints. Good morning. This is the day that the Lord has made. I am going to rejoice and be glad in. The Lord is my shepherd, and I shall not want. He making me lay down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He restored my soul. That he lead me in the path of righteousness for my name's sake. Yeah, yeah. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I say through death, I will feel no evil. For thou, for thou art with me. That rod and that staff, they comfort me in the presence of my enemies. Surely goodness, surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life and I shall dwell in the house of my God. Thank you. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you, Lord God. God is good. God is good. God is good. Thank you, Lord God. Remember yes. Oh, oh, me. Remember me, Lord God. Remember yes. oh, oh, me. Remember me, Lord God. Oh, oh, oh. Remember 
above me. God, heal me, O oh Lord, and I shall be healed. Save me, and I shall be saved. For you are my praise, Jeremiah 17 and 14. Members in the hospital, we have none, praise God. Praise God, for he is a healer, thank God. Members in nursing home, we have Willie Mae Davis, the Ann Arbor Inn in Warren, Mother Dolores Given yes. in the Lodge at Taylor, yes. Deacon Charles Reese in Lakeland House in Taylor, in Troy, I'm sorry, Mother Juanita Swanson in Village of Westland in Westland, Michigan. Members at home, we have Reverend Thornton Davis, Sister Kimberly Abbey, Sister Esther Barnett, Sister Willie Mae Berry, Sister Carolyn Byers, yes. Sister Rosalind Carter, yes. Brother Ronald Everett, yes. Sister Ina Ford, Sister Verley Green, Sister, Ro Sister Loretta Harrison, Brother Khaleesi Hill, Mother Leslie Johnson, Mother Annie, Le Mother Annie Leverett is here with us today, praise God. Yes. Deacon Melvin Little, Reverend and Sister Hiram McBurrow Sr., Sister Darlene Munger, Sister Sandra Watkin Moore, Mother Queen Esther Myers, Sister Lynette Oden, Sister Let Lavelle Rhodes, Deacon Edwin Rhodes, Sister Iomi Rhodes, Sister Gloria Taylor, Sister Shanae Tucker and baby Skyler, Brother Lenny Turner, Mother Lizzie Verges, Sister Lorraine Wingate, she's in rehab, Sister Connie Wilson, Mother Maddie Woolfolk. And let us continue to keep our members uplifted in prayer because we know that the Lord will make a way and also in scripture, James 5 and 14 through 16 said, is any sick among you? Let us call for the elders of the church and let us then pray over them, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer of the faith shall save the sick and the Lord, the Lord shall raise him up and if he have committed sins, they shall forgive him. The Lord is a healer. Yes, he is. The Lord is a healer. He is a way maker out of no way. He is a bridge over troubled waters. We have to call on him day and night. The Lord will make a way. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. If you haven't called on him today, call on him this day. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I love you, Lord Jesus. The Lord is a way maker. Call on him. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. I love you, Lord Jesus, with my whole heart, body, and soul. Now we will have prayer. Mother Crumley. Amen. 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 Amen.
first giving praise and thanks to our Lord and Savior for another day. I thank you for the spirit with me. Let me tell you something about a mother. If you live long enough, the spirit going to dwell within you. Things you go through now, you ain't been through them, but you know God will carry you through them. I want you to know today that we love the Lord. We love the Lord. Life got something for you all. Life's going to teach you some stuff. Young people, be all right. It, give God what you have now. But oh, it's going to come a day. You're going to want to do and can't. But if you already done it, you don't have to worry about it. You don't have to worry about it. I know I'm up here for proud, but I just got to tell you, God is a keeper. I went to the doctor a couple of weeks ago and I ran in and I jumped on the table for my shots in the back and got off the table and was paralyzed. Couldn't walk. Stood there. I said, what's going on? I said, the nurse said, you okay? I said, no, I can't walk. I said that. Mm. I didn't get upset. Mm. I said, go get me some water. Mm. I said, I drank the water. Still went to step. Mm. I said, I can't walk. Mm. And you all, I know I got to get on with the service. But this is where the problem was. I didn't tell my daughters I was going to the doctor for them shots. I was so afraid I couldn't walk out of that place. And the doctor came. One of the nurses said, uh-uh, go get the doctor. Bring him back. Uh, we don't know what to do for her. And he came back in and showed me. And I said, Lord, I thank you for the healing me. You all, we don't know what you gonna go through. But he will heal you. He will heal you. I, I, yes, just trust and believe. You all, it is a such thing as stay prayed up. Stay prayed up. And I'm finna go and do what I'm supposed to do. Grace. Gracious Father, I come this morning saying thank you. Thank you, Lord, for you, you being God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for you being who you are. Lord God, before we ask you for anything, you want to thank you for all things. All things and everything. And Lord God, as we ask you, we're going to first say, Lord, please forgive us. Please forgive us for our sins and the things we've done that wasn't according to your word. But Lord God, you're such a loving and a caring God. You love us so much. Out of all we do that's not according to you, you love us. You Lord love. God, I'm interceding for Leland this morning. You love Leland so much that you kept you us with in operation a hundred years. Lord God, that's a blessing. I thank you for it. Lord God, I'm asking this morning for you, you to bless our sick and shed in this. But Lord God, we say shed in, but Lord God, I know you got to bring them off the list. I know it ain't no be shut in. We gotta be open doors, Lord God. I thank you for it this morning, Lord God. I thank you for our deacon. Thank you for our mother's board. Thank you for our minister. Thank you most of all for our pastor. Lord God, give us the open mind to be obedient to the pastor. Lord, we need them, Lord. We can't go nowhere without them. You call them. You didn't call us. Lord, bless us. Lord, keep us, Lord God. And keep us in unity, Lord God. Keep us in unity. Touch someone that's going in 
for different my procedures and don't know how they gonna come soul. out. But Lord God, just keep your hand in the Lord's hand. I know what you'll do. Yeah. I know you will. Lord God, this prayer I present to you today in the name Say, of Jesus. I pray. My Amen. So you Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Keep on. Thank you, you Lord. We can't say that enough. We can't say that enough. Thank you, Lord. You, you can't say that enough. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for all that he's done for us. I'm talking about me. You have to be personal and say it about you. Thank you, Lord, for waking you this morning. He didn't have to touch you. Many was passed by that didn't wake up this morning. Thank you, Lord, for waking me this morning. Thank you, Lord, that I had clothes to put on my back. Thank you, Lord, that I had food on my table, Lord. Thank you, Lord, that I had shelter. Thank you, Lord, that I had a little car that I could drive up and down the street. Thank you, Lord, for my husband, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for the wives, oh, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for my children, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We just have so many blessings that we take for granted. Thank you, Lord. Just for so much that you do that we take for granted. That we just don't say thank you enough. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I just want to say thank you, Lord. 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 Mother Banks. Pass the note and we turn it over to you. Amen. I was enjoying it so much, y'all cut it short on me. I was looking for, <laughs> I was looking for something else. Amen. Amen. Come on, let's give, amen, our mother's board a wonderful hand clap. Amen, 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 amen. What a wonderful and awesome job. Did y'all hear how they read scripture? Amen. When you read scripture like that, that's because you know and believe the word of God. Amen, amen. They were just on fire today. I thank God for each and every one of them and, and all that they have done. Y'all give it up for my mother's boy once again. Amen. Prayer, prayer. Amen. They, I, I, was, I was wondering how we going to get into a testimony service. Amen. Mother Crumley's shoulders. Just get up and tell about the goodness of the Lord. Amen. We just thank God for you being here today. Amen. We welcome you to lead a missionary Baptist church. Those that are watching us online, you are more than welcome to come in. We want to give you an invitation to come on into the land. Amen. We thank God for you. For those that are here. Amen. Come on. Let's give yourself a round of applause. Amen. And thank you for coming. We're more than happy, amen, to have you here. Amen. We did something a few months ago in celebrating our history and just celebrating our people, amen. And it was something that was just so awesome the way that it was put together that I said that I wanted to make sure that we had constant reminders of who we are where we come from and different things that we have gone through and how great a people we are collectively and individually, how God has blessed us. Uh, so that I wanted to make sure that we showcased um, the blessings that God give us as a people every month. Amen. Amen. So I put to task. Amen. Dr. Hildreth, she was just speaking in my spirit. Amen. And so I spoke to her. Amen. And she has put some things together. And we want, I want you all to just pay attention as we have this presentation that comes. As she prepares herself to come up. Amen. Uh, what I want to do. Amen. And is that large enough? Do you need a larger? That's, that's good. Amen. And so I want to make sure we pan the camera on her. Amen. She's beautiful. Beautiful. Give it up for her. She's beautiful. We want her to show her. 
represent Leland, amen, amen. So as she comes forward, amen, we want to make sure, amen, we give her attention, amen. Amen, amen. We will have now for Dr. Hildreth to come and give us our presentation. Thank you. To my pastor, Reverend Knowlton, to the associate ministers, officers, members, and friends, good morning. Good morning. The monthly um, Black History Notes that will be shared will be brought to you by the Leland Mich uh, Museum Committee. And I want to say that because it's not just me who's doing it. I'm depending upon other people to help us to uh, complete the task that has been handed to us because it's a, a little bigger than just what we do on uh, in February. We're going to also be bringing some interviews that we're doing on members. And we, I may be coming to you to ask you if you would do an interview with us for the church's anniversary. So keep that in mind. Uh, just very briefly, can the museum committee stand up? Just very briefly. If you signed and said you would help, thank you so much. They deserve that. So we're going to start with Cush. I'm going to be, uh, I think a good place for us to start these is at the beginnings. A lot of people will try to tell you that we did not have any great empires in the uh, ancient days. And we should make sure that not only we know that we did, but our children know that we did. And so standing on uh, what we, we see in the Bible, uh, in jo uh, Joshua 4.21, it tells us that we're supposed to pass this information down and make sure that our children understand how good God has been to us as a people. So if we start with Cush, we see that the kingdom of Cush was located on the Nile in a region called Nubia in what was now, uh, now southern Sudan and southern Egypt. Though some over, the, uh, though Egypt overshadowed Kush very often, Kush stood as a regional power in Africa for over 1,000 years. It reached its peak in the second millennium BC when it ruled over a vast swath of territory along the Nile River in what is now Sudan. Almost all of what we know about Kush comes from the Egyptians. It was an economic center that operated a lucrative market. And they marketed in items such as ivory, incense, iron, and especially gold. Kush was both a trading partner and a military rival of Egypt. It, is e it even ruled Egypt as the 25th dynasty. Kush adopted many of its neighbors' customs. For example, their style of dress was similar to that of Egypt's, and they uh, built pyramids. Of course, it was their own type of pyramids. But there were differences also because their language and their written system was different. The next uh, empire that we'll look at very briefly, and you'll notice that these are going to be short. They're not going to be as long and elaborate as the ones in February, but I'm hoping that I still share some good information with you. Uh, if we look at Mali, Mali had kings, and they called those kings Mansa. The Mali Empire would reach its high point of strength during the reign of Mansa Musa. Musa became the ruler of Mali in 1312. The Mali Empire flourished because of two resources that they had, gold and salt, rock salt. Musa is best known for his 4,000 mile journey to Mecca because he didn't go and he didn't go by himself. Just imagine this. He took a caravan that included tens of thousands of soldiers, 
slaves, heralds. And if you don't know what heralds are, they are um, messengers, communicators. When they would pass through a city or a town, the herald would go before them to let them know that this king and all these people are coming through. Uh, and the, his heralds were draped in Persian silk and carrying golden staffs. The elaborate convoy that accompanied Musa marched alongside camels and horses carrying hundreds of pounds of gold. He would go, to, uh, go on to have an empire that spanned ter several territories, including current day Senegal, Gambia, Guinea, Niger, Nigeria, and Chad. This is all in addition to Mali. So that was a huge empire. And you've heard me talk of, of Timbuktu in the past. Timbuktu was located in Mali. And of course, at first it started as a, a trading post, but it became uh, eventually a learning center of the world. Uh, Mali would be conquered by the late 15th century. Now this ends today's historical note. Uh, we hope to start featuring the interviews that I mentioned earlier of our uh, members in May. Thank you. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much, Dr. Hildred, and our, um, uh, um, the committee that supports her. Amen. And what she's doing. Amen. It's good to know about yourself. Amen. To learn more. Amen. About ourselves. And so we want to make time for that. Amen. Brother Booth, if you could stand up, Brother Booth. Amen. Brother Booth is in the house. Brother Booth is in. The Give it up for Brother Booth, y'all. Amen. Amen. He is going to head off, amen, our men's day. Amen. Amen. So we thank God, amen, for him. He said he'll think about it. And when he didn't say no, I know that meant yes. Amen. So he's going to think about it. But it, well, I just wanted to make sure that I made a correction. Our men's day will not be on the 21st of April. Amen. That is our, our male course concert. Amen. That is our concert. Amen. So we'll be getting back with you with a later date of our men's day uh, so that we can make sure that we get all things together with that amen and we just want to make it as spectacular as you wonderful women do every time on women's day amen amen so we have a great man that's going to head us off amen and we're going to make uh, that um, date available to you as soon as the men meet after today, amen, after service, or a brief meeting with the men after service, amen. And this will be our concrete date. It won't change. It won't shift, amen. This will be our date that we're going to have every year when we put this date together. Come on, let's praise the Lord, amen, for that. Thank God. Um, Leland, I'm going to, um, going to tell you I got a little nervous uh, this weekend. I, I don't know about you. Um, did any of y'all get a letter? I didn't get a letter. Amen. There were some letters that was mailed out from Leland. Amen. Can I have our, our, our membership committee to stand? All our membership committee. Stand up, membership committee. Stand up. They've done a wonderful job. What they're doing is that they're sending out love notes from Leland. Oh, now y'all got to see it. They're sending out love notes. There have been times in my past I didn't get love notes. So I was nervous when I went to the mailbox and I saw Leland Missionary Baptist Church. And I say, oh, Lord, they done sent me a letter. Amen. <laughs> I don't know what Sunday morning going to be right, but they timed it right after Easter. I was a little nervous. But I opened it up and it was a love letter of concern and care from Leland Missionary Baptist Church. Amen. And we have so many ministries that have continued through the pandemic. Amen. We have our prayer band. If any of our prayer band members are here, please stand. Amen. I just want to show you some love. Amen. Any of our prayer band members that are here. Amen. Amen. So they're not, you know, nobody's here, but have anybody ever received the love from the prayer band? Amen. Stand up. Amen. Stand up. Amen. So let's give our prayer band a wonderful hand clap. They've been consistent with what they've been doing, showing love. Amen. And our membership committee has shown another level of love. We're just sending out care and love cards to the members. Amen. So I'm going to ask you if you would. A lot of these came back because it was 
um, some wrong addresses and things. So I'm, I'm going to ask you, and I'm asking you, please, um, um, don't make it hard for Leland to love you. So all you got to do is, amen, please just refill out your card, amen, if your address have changed, if you've moved, if your telephone number has changed, that way if anything should happen to you, amen, or you just, or we just want to reach out and show you love, because a whole lot of people in nowadays say, well, the church don't do nothing for me. The church don't do, they don't never show up, they don't never call me, but we here at Leland Missionary Baptist Church are doing the best we can to reach out to you, to have communication with you, to show you love and let you know that we love you with the love of Jesus. So please, if your number should change, if your address should change, please let's fill out the cards so that we can be in contact with you. Come on, let's give it up for the love of Leland. Amen. 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 So thanking God today, as you have seen, we have had some of the children that have left out of the sanctuary to go into our uh, uh, Church of Angels. Amen. So they can give us a spiritual presentation. Amen. Of what they're learning over on the other side. Amen. And thank God today. Amen. I had not seen her in a few weeks. Amen. We have Sister Iomi Rose that just came on in the house. Amen. <laughs> Amen. So we just thank God and thank God for Leland. I got a chance, amen, to see the old Leland yesterday. Amen. And we went by and went to the homegoing celebration of Sister Singleton. Amen. And we got a chance to see history after history of Leland. Amen. And Leland, I found out some things about Leland. Amen. Amen. While I was there, it was some wonderful history that was going on and some individuals that was in the place at that time. Amen. But we thank God for the continued care. Amen. You don't know what it means for someone to just show you love in your time of needs. Amen. And I thank God that I am at a church serving that shows love when love is needed. Amen. Leland, once again, please give it up for yourselves. Amen. How great it is. Amen. Amen. Everything has been put into order. Amen. And if you don't mind, I want to go into the word of the Lord today. Amen. Those of you that have your Bibles, if you don't, uh, don't mind, I want you to turn to the book of Mark chapter 11, verse number 20. Mark chapter 11, verse number 20. It's not a, it's, it's, it's a, a passage that we read, but it's not one that's familiarizing when it comes to being preached. And so um, um, this may be one that you may not have heard, um, but God has given this to me for such a time as this. And so I'm going to ask you if you would follow, amen, as we go into the word of the Lord this day. Thank you so very much. Mark chapter 11, amen, and I'm going to read beginning at verse number 20. And it reads as following. And in the morning as they passed by, they saw the fig tree dried up from the roots. And Peter, calling to remembrance, said unto him, Master, behold, the fig tree which thou curseth is withered away. And Jesus answering, saith unto them, Have faith in God. If you don't mind for a moment, I want to ask this question, amen, and we will pose the answer to it in our spirits, amen. And the question is, what good is it? Amen. What good is it? Mark chapter 20, Jesus showed frustration without fury. He had desired for there to be something of substance and sustenance for himself. He created us each for a purpose. Jesus spoke a, per, a, a curse upon the fig tree for being unpurposeful. And I don't know about you, uh, it, 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 in my study, in my reading, and I paused at this and went back over it and I said, Lord, I don't want to be unpurposeful for you. Hmm. Here we draw this out from the word of God that, that, that there are moments that when you don't produce for Jesus, Jesus will leave you alone. And, and it causes me to shudder. And I know it's not just me, but I know that as many of us as in this room, it causes me to shudder when I 
live my life and know that the only reason that there are abilities for me to wake up in the morning, for me to overcome obstacles in my pathway, for me to get healed from sicknesses, for me to have joy after sorrows, for me to have strength to make it to tomorrow is because of Jesus. And then for there to be a moment that Jesus would look at me and say, I can't use you no more. That, that causes me to, to, to pause. It, it causes me to have serious thought. That Lord, I don't want for you to ever tell me that I'm not useful for you. Here now we have this, that God created us all for a purpose. He spoke a curse upon this fig tree for being unpurposeful in its creation. And the time of need for Christ, when he looked at it and, it, and needed it to do his right purpose, it was in the right place at the right time, but no production. Here it is, Peter was amazed of the word, speaking a word that became truth in Jesus canceling the assignment of the fig tree. The fig tree which was figless. This is why we have to understand it, that we have to have this, that we always claim so much the ways of trust in Jesus when everything is going our way. But then we have doubt in believing the outcomes of what could happen when we don't do it God's way. I just want to, it won't be long, but I'm going to be direct today. That the truth of the matter is, is that we have to understand that there are consequences when we don't live lives that are purposeful and intentional and the reason that God created us and we don't produce. (laughs) Truth of the matter is, is that, that, that it does not matter how seasoned you are, you're still have the ability to produce. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Does not matter how hurt you are, <laughs> you still have the ability yes. to produce. Yes. It does not matter what else is going on in the field, you still have the ability yes. to produce. Yes. Here Jesus shows us with this example, Jesus take advantage of this moment to share with the 12, to have faith in God with confidence that if you do, you can speak to the mountain and move and it be thrown into the sea, having no doubt in your heart, believing what he says will be done. Whatever he says will be done. I can just imagine if I was to walk in Peter's shoes that I would be shocked because here it is that Jesus, the one that always makes things better, now made something worse. He canceled it. Jesus, the one that wakes up the dead. Jesus, the one that gives the multiplication to food that feeds everyone. Jesus, the one that heals the sick. Jesus, the one that casts out demons. Now, wait a minute. Jesus, you're canceling and cursing because you're the one that that changes a curse into a blessing. And now Jesus, here now you're saying that you're done, it's over. When you oftentimes have shown me that you are the one that gives us a restart. A revival. But now, Jesus, wait a minute. You, 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 you have canceled the assignment of life. Church people don't like preaching like this. But the truth of the matter is, is that if you don't live a life for the Lord, there's some cancellations that's going to go on in your life. 
You can't continue to just think day after day, week after week, month after month, year after year, that God is just going to continue to bless you. And you're just not going to do anything for the Lord. Now, I, I, I'm saying this to someone that is watching us. Because in the wonderful, blessed sanctuary of Leland Missionary Baptist Church at 22420 Finkel Avenue that's been in existence 100 plus years, we know better. We know that when we make up our minds and wake up every morning, we got Jesus and Leland on our mind. We know that especially when we come into the church on a Sunday morning, we erase all of the agitations and irrigations of the week and we're coming to lift our hands and praise the Lord. We know that here, don't we? I'm not talking to any of you, but I just want to bring it to the consciousness of our minds. That there's someone that we might walk into on a Sunday afternoon. There's someone we'll run into on a Monday or every day of the week that we need to be encouraging. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And I made up my mind yes, that I want to be purposeful for the Lord. That's it, That's it. And honey, baby child, I want to let you know that if you are not living a life to be purposeful for the Lord, you may need to come into the house of the Lord and give your life to him. And understand and realize where your blessings shall come from. Can I move on a little further? Here we have here that Jesus stands on the first thing that you must believe in God. Disregard all that we've learned about doubt. Of personal reflections of people in your life. Because there's understanding is that people will let you down. People that you love. Yes, sir. People that you adore. Yes, people that you make sacrifices for. Yes, will let you down. Yes, sir. And if I could if I could say this truth be told, there are some people that we have at moments in our life put in front of God. Uh, oh, and the moments will come that that they'll turn their backs on you. People yes, will let you down. Yes, but here we have the understanding that we must get refocused on God. That's it, That's that has it. never failed. No, he, God, is faithful, dependable, trustworthy, and able to do the impossible. And he can bring all things to pass if you have faith in God to eliminate the distractions of life that your attraction will become greater towards him. Yes, sir. God wants to show you who he is. Yes, sir. But the truth of the matter is we got to stop looking the other way. Yeah. I hear you, I hear you. There are some folk that receive blessings, but they don't accept it because they're looking in another yeah. direction yeah. instead of looking to God. Yes, sir. Be careful of looking to who's the new president that's going to be the greatest blessing in your life. Some of us know that we've lived through everything and God has always been our sustainer. It's not been a stimulus check. Here we have now that when we look at this and understand who God is, God is just trying to gain our attention. Faith encourages you to move to the confidence and to the action, speaking and then doing. Many times we have the struggle with idea of spiritual success without performing a physical activity or moving in faith. But we want God to do everything to us. But we won't move to do anything for him. Here it is. Faith in God will bring what's in you out of you. What will you produce for God? What will you give to God? God is calling many of us. But the conversation is no and not yet. And Lord, you don't know. Lord, what you're asking me to do, it, 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 just, it, it, it just seems as though it's more than I can handle. Lord, what you're showing me seems 
are vaster than who I, 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 my friendships are. Lord, what it is that you're tasking me to that I don't have the talent and I don't have the resources to do it. But somebody know that when you just are obedient to God, he'll provide everything that you need to get his task done. Truth of the matter is this. All God is asking for is your participation. All he's asking you for is that, that you don't have to worry about it. You don't have to create it. All you got to do is catch hold and follow me as I lead you. Somebody knows this term, blind faith. And sometimes you have to learn to trust in the Lord that all you got to do is close your eyes and say, yeah, whatever you take me to is... It's kind of like, uh, kind of like um, uh, being out at one of those amusement parks, getting on one of those rides. Yes. I was a fool and had a child over the age of 40. And here it is that um, she likes roller coasters. Yeah. My body don't like roller coasters. Yes, sir. Uh, it's, not vertigo, it's not vertigo, Deacon Green, Mother Crumley, but I get to swimming in the heads when I get on them rides. But what I learned is that, that, that because of love, yeah. <laughs> love how you do some crazy stuff, y'all, because of love. I can go a whole, I can do a, preach a whole nother sermon on that, but love, love how you do some crazy stuff. But, but love, 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 love. Uh, tender child looking at your curly hair, looking just like you on a picture. She say, Dad, I need you. Oh, no. All right, I get on the ride, and somewhere around the clickety-clack going up the hill, I realize at some point I got to come back down the hill. I, 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 I'm just talking, y'all. I, I don't know Bible, but a but, uh, Bible and, and, and just life. And, and, and somewhere in the clickly clack and going up. But then what happens is, is on the way down, as my stomach is getting to my throat, I just close my eyes and say, Jesus. Yeah. Take a deep breath and hold my breath and say, Jesus. Can't hold my breath no more. I just go, mmm. Come on down. I say that because there are moments that as we are riding a long life, yes, sir. Yes, sir. you just got to hold your breath, yes, sir. Yes, sir. hold your lips closed when you don't say the wrong thing. You got to learn how to close your eyes because if it's looking at you and it may distract you and just say, Lord, lead me. Some of us can give testimonies and say that I know what it's like for God to lead me. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And then when I open my eyes and I take a brief breath, all I can do is say, thank you, Lord, it's That's over. It. That's it. That's it. Here now we have this. Today we deal with such a cancel culture. The fear here is now in church that we have too many cancel Christians. There are too many say saints. What I mean by cancel Christians, we have too many Christians that will cancel coming to the services of God because of emotional issues that they don't trust and have enough faith in God to overcome. The realization, and I, it's been resonating in my spirit for a few weeks now, that, that Lord, uh, the truth of the matter is you don't have to move my mountain. Because I look back and I'm, I'm just, just, just so satisfied with Jesus because I look back and, 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 and there are, some, and, and there are some, some yesteryear's issues that I'm still dealing with. But the strength of it is, is that I have to remind myself of the past pains because I got over it and I'm above it now because of the love of Jesus. And sometimes, I, I, I just want to help someone along the way, sometimes be careful of sitting on your seat of sorrow and reminiscing on ruined times. Too often of a time we remind ourselves of the remorses of our life. But I don't know about you, I've made up my mind in 2024, I'm looking for the reward of living for God. Here now, too many say so saints satisfied with speaking it but not moving on it. We have enough look like and need more live like sandwich. Dress the part 
but don't play the part. Due to our faith to move out beyond the familiar. Um, and, and, and before y'all stopped, we were doing good. Y'all was clapping and saying amen. I started saying something y'all don't like. Y'all shut down quick. Amen. Uh, but, but I'm talking about this fig tree, y'all. I ain't talking about y'all. I say everything good at least. And I ain't talking about y'all. I'm talking about this fig tree that you can look the part. If we look at this and we go into the study of it, it says that the fig tree was full of leaves. It was so full of leaves. Now look, y'all. It was so full of leaves, it fooled Jesus. Jesus was on an assignment and knew when the date would be done, that his life would be over. He didn't have no time to play. He knew what he came to do and understood every movement that was happening in his life. It was so blossoming that it fooled Jesus. Jesus looked at it and said, well, I'm hungry. There is a fig tree. And he walked to it and it looked like it was so succulent. It looked like he would have the satisfaction that there being something of nutrition given to his human body that he went to it and searched. I'm going to get y'all. He, he, he went to it and he... Yeah. Nothing there. Something was supposed to have been there, but nothing there. Figless fig tree. Nothing was there. Now the argument could be was, well, was it out of season? The argument could have been, was there others that came and picked all of it? But the understanding of it was, is that Everything that was created was created by God. Yes, sir. Yes. And there's something about that when you know and understand that Jesus is coming to search you, what do you have for the Savior? <laughs> is there something savoring left in you for the Savior? Everybody look at everybody and smile. Just look at somebody and smile. You ain't got to smile at me. You look at somebody and smile. You came here with them. You knew what cologne they was going to wear. Don't act like they stinky now. You sit next to them every Sunday. You know the, the liniment and all that. Y'all talk about what y'all rub on your knees and elbows, ankles. You know how they breath smell, which medication they took, the orange juice they drink, or tell them, girl, don't, don't drink coffee this time. Look at your neighbor and smile at them. Is there something savoring in you left when the Savior shows up? Here the fig tree hadn't, hadn't produced anything for the Savior. What an awesome opportunity it would have done for Jesus to have changed this message and say that because this fig tree nourished me this day, it will live forevermore. Y'all miss y'all shot on that. Because when I showed up and asked and was in need and it provided what the Savior needed, it will forevermore be blessed. Because when I called on the name of green and clay and leveret and they answered when I called them and were able to give praises, worship and honor unto me, their lineage shall ever be blessed from this day on. But it didn't happen. It would happen now that too often of a time we look like it. I don't want a plumber dressed up as a policeman. Come on up, preacher. I don't want a firefighter coming in my home talking about he's a painter. Come on up, preacher. Amen. Oftentimes we need to be who we display ourselves to be. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Especially for the Lord. God needs you to be what he made you to be. Yes, 
and do what he called you to do. I don't mind if you just, I, I didn't bother you today. If you don't mind, tell your neighbor, say, neighbor, I might need you. Stop pretending. Y'all didn't get that. Turn to another neighbor. Say, neighbor, I might need you. Stop pretending. Now look at the one you really want to look at and say, no, stop. Don't do it. No, it's first Sunday. Don't do it. Don't do it. Don't do it. Don't do it. But the truth of the matter is, is that too often of a time we look the part. Yes, sir. But we got to learn the seriousness of the times. We need individuals to live the part yes, of the purpose that God called them to be and what you propose yourself to be. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Oftentimes we want to put on things yes. that we are not prepared for, yes. for our own individual reasons. Yes. But you can't handle the weight of it. Here we have now Hebrews 11 and 6 says it like this, without faith it is impossible to please him, our God. The word along with countless references in the Bible makes fact of the component of a Christian must be faithful. Faith is required for our salvation, for an effective prayer life, drawing in supernatural to the natural, healing, deliverance, miracles, and only from the actions of faith manifesting belief, moving into the actions of what we expect to receive from God making us greater productive saints. If you don't believe, you can't have. If you don't have faith in it, you can't get nothing out of it. There's something about the fact that the recourses, you understand, we always want the reward. But we have to live a life of faithfulness, believing and understanding the ability of God to not only bless us, but Lord, don't take your hands off of us. If you don't mind, just for a moment, tell your neighbor, neighbor, I'm changing. Have here that, that I want to be more, I want to produce more, neighbor, I'm changing. Without faith, we can never discover the peace of God and have peace with God to please God. And having the faith will give us the will to remove those things that out of our life that we can receive the rewards of living a life with God. I hear you, I hear you. Jesus is emphatic of this. You must have faith in God, believing in the reality of the ability of God. Yes, Pertaining, infusing your spiritual man and your natural man, whereas you can't just feel it on the inside and not show it on the outside. There's something that we need to understand that when we have faith in God, there is an outer man that shows a confidence and understanding that as long as I got God on my side, my knees not knocking no more. As long as I got God on my side, I've learned that when I look past my present problems, that my frown is turned upside down to a pro to a smile. That I can praise God in the midst of the problems that are going on in my life because the understanding he just has not delivered me yet, but I trust him to be a deliverer. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Here it is now that yes. Jeremiah helps me from a place of discomfort and disappointment. But beyond his complaints, the word of God was like a fire inside of him, shut up in his bone. My question is, what's in you? What's of you that God needs to come out of you? What is undeniably the yearning of for the expressions of God beyond the current problems in your life? Maybe it's not good. Maybe it's not a good season for you. But I see Jesus, maybe, maybe now others will, that he has arrived for our appointments of praise and peace. Come on up, preacher. I am prepared to bloom, maybe, in the passing of my life. Yes. But no one picked me. <laughs> when I thought that I was full of things of nourishment and comfort. Nobody thought to even look my way and pull the fruits off of the vine. 
but from me the understanding that Jesus I'm prepared to be plucked and pruned it is in me for him to receive what comes out of me there's someone that I need to have clarity and understanding today that you have something for the Lord that's on the inside of you no matter how bearing it seems the fields of your life have been there's something on the inside that you have to give to the Lord what good is it what good is it to work towards gaining the whole wide world and losing your soul what good is it that when you know that there's more that you can give to the Lord but you are concerned about individuals that have done you wrong in the fields of your life what good is it to come to church every Sunday after Sunday after Sunday dressing yourselves up and waving your hands praising to the music but not having faith that God can move you past the problems in your life what good is it for you to look like a servant of God but you don't have faith to keep serving the Lord something about to change you have to understand here that Jesus shows us in spite of our weaknesses have faith in God you can have faith to call it to be so to cancel it out of your life what purpose is it what is it producing for you? So often every time we have to be careful about the facts that we are lingering to things and purposes that does not give us any spiritual nutritional value for the Lord. Too often over times we are proposing that if we just look like it that we'll get blessed because we're dressed. Here it is that what Jesus is giving it as an example and let it be known that if it is not going to do its purpose there's no sense in it taking up space it says here that what happened is that not only the leaves withered on the fig tree but it said it died all the way down to the roots can I talk to a church for a moment that there are many of us that are rooted in the church but not purposeful for the works of God. We're rooted and we won't move. We have a field of individuals that are around us that will help us to stand in the storms that's going on. But the truth of the matter is what sense does it make to be rooted but not be rewarded? Here now, I'm going to sit in my seat every Sunday and you better not sit in my seat because it's my seat I've been planted here for 40 years and everybody that passed by here know this is my seat so I don't care if that family with 10 kids come in you better tell them to go to the other row because this is my seat well I've been president of this auxiliary and ministry for the last 40 years and ain't nobody gonna move me off of my post a presidency my family was the president my grandma my granddaddy do you know who I am I'm rooted where I am and ain't nobody gonna dig me up if I die I'm going to tell you what's going to happen after I die because I'm rooted and it's mine but what purpose are you producing for the Lord taking up space in the field Jesus lets it be known that you will draw nothing out of this fertile ground. He lets it be cursed from the trees down to the roots. Here we have now faith in God, navigation of your life. Faith that God will undergird you in sinking situations. Jesus lets them know to have faith in God that no matter how there are crucial moments in your life to make sure that you are still having the ability to produce when the Lord shows up 
have faith in believing in God that prayer will fix it. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things that are not seen that you must have faith when you don't have enough substance. You must have faith when you don't see it. You need to tell your neighbor that neighbor is going to change. There's an understanding that when I have faith in the Lord, uh, that, 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 that it does not have a hold on me of the enemy trying to change my mind. That when I have faith in the Lord, uh, what good is it to have doubt in my life? Uh, that when I have faith in the Lord, uh, it gives me the understanding to have hope beyond the despairs and the sorrows of my life. Uh, that when I have faith in the Lord, uh, there's a joy on the inside uh, that changes my journey's thing. Uh, that there are times in my life when walking along the ways uh, that I've had my head held down but there's something about having faith in the Lord that I can hold my head up and say bring it on because I know that God got my back can I close it like this y'all is there anybody in the building today that can stand to your feet and tell somebody a testimony that there are times in my life that I didn't know how I was going to make it there were times in my life that it looked like it was going to be better but it wound up being worse but there's something about the disappointment that I did not get discouraged because I looked beyond my problem and I saw God on the other side of my issue is there anybody in the building today that can give a testimony to somebody and just let them know whatever problem you have have you tried my Jesus Tell him he's all right. Turn to somebody and say, neighbor, I don't know what you're going through, but you you have faith to stand the storms in your life because there were times when it looked like it was dark, but there's something that I can stay standing here right now that when I thought I wasn't going to make it, somebody can praise the Lord and say, God has made a way. I'm still here by his grace and his mercy ain't he worth being glorified clap your hands let's go together and say thank you lord for all you've done for me problems move out of my way i can speak to the mountain because i have faith that it'll move all up the way tell your problem problem you don't know i've changed i'm a producer now i'm producing producing praise in the midst of my problem problem you don't know I've changed now I'm producing glorification that I'm letting it be known that God has brought me a mighty mighty long way is there somebody anybody should be everybody that can say Lord you made a way out of no way I've tried you in my midnight experience but I woke up with this morning with the Lord on my side. Won't he make a way? Won't he bring you out? Won't he take you over? Won't he pick you up? Turn you around? Put your feet on solid ground? Ain't he good? Ain't he good? Ain't he good? Tell somebody it don't mean nothing. Everything I have is because I got God that's on my side everything I have because I have faith he'll make a way everything I have I'm lifting up and saying thank you Lord have you tried him won't he do it have you tried him didn't he make a way have you tried him have you dried your tears up I know it is good that I've seen disappointment I know it is good that I've been
went through some pits in my life. I know it is good that I've had sickness in my body. Why is it good? Because God showed up in the midst of my issues. Is there somebody that can testify with me? Won't the Lord make a way? Won't the Lord bring you out? Won't the Lord deliver you from doubt? Why would he do it? Because on the cross, on Calvary's hill, he died. Didn't he die? He died. Didn't he die? But somebody knows, buried in a borrowed tomb. Somebody celebrated, thought it was over. But somebody knows, three days later, he got up with all power. And now, I can have faith that even when it looks like I'm not down, I'm buried, I'm dead, I'm delivered because he got up with all, 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 all power to overcome, all power, I can endure, all power, I can make it, ain't he God? Yes, he is, ain't good, yes, he is, has he brought you out of darkness into the marvelous light? Look, 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 look where the Lord has brought you from. Tell him, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. What is it good for? Jesus and faith in God is good for every, 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 every situation in your life. What is it good for? We hold on to no good things more than we hold on to what's good for us. We'll, her testimony is right here from 30, 40 years that we'll hold on to things that destroy our bodies because it tricks our mind. We'll do things that tear up the temple that God has given us for temporary sensations. We'll hold on to it. We'll become addicted. We'll hold on to it. It's no good for us. But we'll hold on to it because it gives us a sensation for a moment. No good for us. Marriage is tore up because you see a big booty. Marriage is messed up because you see a big bank roll. No good. No good. When God has presented you with the best thing you can have. And we'll turn away from it. And we'll use the, the most minute excuses. I didn't like the pastor say big booty on Sunday morning. So I ain't going to. Not gonna say nothing about that. But I'm spending $59 for these undergarments I got on to hold it together. I don't like the pastor say a big bankroll because I'm a woman of God. I'm not looking for nobody with no money. But you looking. The truth of the matter is that we both don't want to be sitting up in the cold. Somebody got to work. But we use the most minute things to say, I'm letting God go. That's it. What good is it worth? What good is it for you? For you to pad problems in your life instead of giving God praise for your life. That's it. That's it. It's good to have forgiveness. Yes, sir. Yeah. It's good to have forgiveness. It's good to have love. 
it's good to have recall in our life because most moments, the problem that irritates us the most is because it's the closest to who we are or who we were. And saints of God, this is what we have to stop doing. We have to stop hating who we were and trying to forget about who that was because God used the used to be you to get the you now. And the you now can draw the used to be used to where you are now. So don't, don't, don't despise somebody because they come here smelling like weed and say, I don't know why they came to church. It's just so disrespectful. I don't understand that. And I hope they never walk. I'm going to talk to Deacon Leverett. I don't know what they're doing. They need to have someone at that back door that they need to have a sniff alert that if it does not smell right, it should not come into our sanctuary. God has held us together for a hundred years and they coming into our house smelling like weed. But what about you? Can't believe they coming into the house of the Lord drunk, liquor on their breasts, and they walking up in the church. You can smell it. They didn't even take the time to do it. But what about you? What about those times that, no, no, no. See, see, see y'all want to be so holy. I remember the time that, that I got started on New Year's Eve. But because of a grandmother and a mother and Daddy, that was a bald head black preacher that when I was grown and out on my own and was alone and did the things I wanted to do, that, that somewhere, that no matter where I was turning it up, that something would always make me look at my beeper back, beeper back then. This day. Look at my beeper. And it was about 1135. Got some gum. Give me some orange juice, man. Give me a rock and ride pop. I make my way into the church. Something that was poured inside of me. And when the new year started off, no matter how out of church I was, I knew at 12 noon I had to get in the church. Because someone in my wobbling states Someone in my sinful worldly stenches thought enough about me to pray. Yeah. Say, I don't know why you do what you do, but I got a God that'll do everything for you. That while you feel you need to do what you're doing, he'll take the taste out of your mouth. He'll take the sensations you will drink and won't get drunk. You will try to get high and he'll show up and say hi. <laughs> and he'll turn your life around. But don't stop him at the door. Because life with anything of horticulturalism, God dog, I said it right. Anything that deals with horticulturalism means things that grow. In order for it to grow better and stronger, the weak things has to be pruned and cut off. So it's not for us to cut them off at the door. It's for us to get them in that the Lord can start cutting off things through the spirit. I say this for those of you that are watching. Come on into the house of the Lord. You don't have to sit on your couches anymore. Come on in. No matter what your issues are or ailments, hey amen. If you laying at home looking at us, you can come in here and lay on one of the benches and be here with us. If you're sitting at home and you can't walk, let us know. Call the office and let us know. We'll have wheelchairs that are waiting for you and take you from the seat of your car and roll you into the sanctuary. Whatever your issues are, don't just stay at home. Come into God's house and let him have a home in you. What is it good for to just lay and look? But it's all about living for the Lord. Can we give the Lord a hand clap of praise on that? Amen. And you, 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 and you, you have a responsibility to tell somebody about the goodness of Jesus and invite them into the house of the Lord because the Lord will make a way. The doors of the church are open by letter, candidate for baptism. What good is it for you to just sit on the outside? What good is it for you to just act like it? But let us begin to grow in the Lord starting on this day. Amen.
So all I want you to do is understand that God is looking for you. No matter what state you're in, no matter what issue that you are going through, no matter what you've been through, no matter what mistakes you've made, he died on the cross for all of that. And all you have to do is make up your mind, Lord, I'm here for you. Just take me. He wants you. He wants you to be in relationship with him. He wants you. He wants for your life to become a testimony of life. He wants you. He did it for you. He didn't do it for the preacher. He didn't do it for the deacons. He did it for those that were lost. Those that did not know the way. Those that shook it up and gambled. And look, he did it for those that fall short. If you don't mind, turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor. Do you know the Lord? What's your reply? Man, y'all are good church this Sunday. Amen. Turn to another neighbor and say, neighbor. Do you know the Lord? What's your reply? Come on, turn to one more neighbor. Y'all know how we do it. Say, neighbor. Do you know the Lord? What's your reply? Come on, let's celebrate that we are all brothers and sisters in the body of Christ and have the knowledge of who he is. Come on, let's celebrate him, y'all. Let's celebrate him. Amen, 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 amen. God bless you. God bless you. I pray that something was said today, amen, that would change your life into being productive for our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. If you would, amen, I want you all to do this. Amen. We have a reading of our church covenant. Amen. Is it up on the screen? Can we put it on the screen? Amen. We're going to have, we're going to have Reverend Clay to come. Amen. And lead us in the reading. Amen. Of our covenant. Amen. We want us to prepare ourselves in our hearts and our minds uh, that truthfully, y'all, this is the truth. You can't hold alts against your brothers and your sisters and expect for God to bless you when you want to bless somebody out <laughs> and then you're asking God to bless you. God gave us a way that we deal with problems eternally and externally, especially as Christians. If we go to the elders of our church, call meetings and let's sit down and talk about it. Let's work out our issues. And I'm not saying this because of anything that's going on or anything that I heard. I'm just saying I want this to be clarity and understanding because we have our youth and young adults that are here. And what I've learned is that children hear everything. They hear everything. Amen. So we, we got to be careful how we talk in the hallways and how we talk at our rehearsals and things like that. And then we want them to come into the church, but they know sister so-and-so don't like sister so-and-so. And this way, you got to be careful of that. And I'm not saying, I, like I say, there's nothing that I've heard, no issues or nothing, but just the word of God. Sometimes we just need reminders. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We need reminders uh, that we have to learn how to be as a Christian community. Amen. Some people are held back from joining Leland because they heard, they speak of the yesteryears of Leland and the yester issues. But you have to be the trumpet that sounds and say, baby, that ain't us. No, 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 no. I don't know what you heard. No, 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 no. I don't know what you're saying. We love one another here. Ain't no fights in the sanctuary. We love one another here. We ain't got no problems. I don't know what you're hearing. That happened in 2003, 2024. You still talking about that old mess. And you have to be the sound and the trumpet. Yes, sir. Yes. Representing God and your church. Yes, sir. Because if you speak well of us, then all they can hear is well things. And that begins to go, I love you. And I like you. And I like you. And that goes a long way. We have to love and like one another. Yes. And there's something about it. I get, you know, I get mad when I find out my family members join other churches. You know why I get mad? Because I got the best church in the world. Amen. Why are you going over there? Amen. <laughs> best church in the world. See, a lot of y'all ain't clapping on that. <laughs> I got the best church in the world. Everything that there could be of Christendom that you need in a church is right here at Lee. Every opportunity for every activity that there could be held at any other church is right here at Leland. Amen. Ain't nothing to it but to do it. Organize it, structure it, put someone in charge of it, and get it done. There's no pause at ministry. The problem is, the call, the, the, the pause is the miseries of yesterdays yeah, yes. that we remind ourselves of. So if you don't mind for a moment, just say this. Say, Lord, Lord. help me. Me. To progress, progress. past pass. my past, my past. Problems. problems. Amen? Amen? Because we're forging towards the future. Come on, let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise. And what he is doing, 
and what he is going to do in our lives. Amen. God bless you. Amen. We'll have Reverend Clay to read our covenant. If we can. If we can all stand and get our covenant together and we shall read it together. Pastor said something that we should take to our heart. This is the best church in the world. I know if it could help somebody that was going through what I was going through, it ought to be able to help anybody. This is our church covenant. Having been led as we believe by the Spirit of God to receive the Lord Jesus Christ as our Savior, and on the profession of our faith, having been baptized in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, we do now in the presence of God, angels, and this assembly most solemnly and joyfully enter into covenant with one another as one body in Christ. Church. We also engage to maintain family and secret devotion, to religiously educate our children, to seek the salvation of our kindred and acquaintances, to walk circumspectly in the world, to be just in our dealings, faithful in our engagements, and exemplary in our deportment, to avoid all tattling, backbiting, and excessive anger, to abstain from the sale and use of intoxicating drink as a beverage, and to be zealous in our efforts to advance the kingdom of our Savior. Church. Brotherly love. To remember each other in prayer. To engage each other in sickness and distress. To cultivate Christian sympathy in feeling and courtesy in speech. To be slow to take offense. But always ready for reconciliation and mindful of the rules of our Savior to secure it without delay. We moreover engage that when we remove from this place, we will as soon as possible unite with some other church where we can carry out the spirit of this covenant and the principles of God's word all together. And now unto him who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus by power and glory forever Amen, amen, amen. Amen, amen. Let us take that. Amen. Y'all know how be in order. I shouldn't have to tell you what to do next. Amen. Please be in order to make sure that you are right in your spot so we can just move through it. Amen. I'll be reading you from the first Corinthians chapter 11, verses 23 through 34. For I have received the Lord that which also I deliver unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. After the same manner, also he took the cup when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as often as ye drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do shew the Lord's death till he come. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and the blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily, eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. 
For if we judge ourselves, and should not be judged, but when we are judged, we chastise on the Lord of the Lord, that we should not be condemned with this world. Wherefore, my brethren, when you come together, eat, tarry one another, for one another. And if any man hunger, let him eat at home, that ye come not together unto condemnation, and the rest will I set in order when I come. Amen. Amen, amen. Wonderful job, on deacon in training. Come on, let's give it up for him. Amen, wonderful job. <laughs> Chairman, moving them around. God bless you, God bless you, amen. As our deacons prepare themselves to go out to serve, amen. We're gonna ask those of you that are at home, amen, uh, that we're not going to extend the service longer to you, amen. We want you to make sure that you are uh, more rested up, amen, to come. Amen. And we want to make sure that we gather your attention, that you stay tuned in to us from start to finish. Uh, so what I'm going to do for those of you that are at home, amen, I'm going to pray the prayer over your representation of the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, that you may take communion one and all together in our visual ministry. So let us pray, Father God, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we're asking you right now, Father God, touch our bodies, our minds, our soul. Lord, clear out our minds, Lord God, and the things that we may hold. Lord God, praying right now that whatever is used for the body and blood and representation, for those of us that are viewing, amen, that you would bless it and change it from a carnal use into a spiritual use. Lord, we pray this in action in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Those of you that are at home, amen, we're going to ask you now to have remembrance that Jesus was with those, amen, that had followed him and had sat on the table and had sat down, amen, to be with one another. But there were some complications, amen, in the room and that Jesus had knew that his time had come. But he knew that there were those that were not all the way, amen, entangled and with him and trusted him to be with them as he traveled this last road that he needed to go on on this side. Amen. There were one that would deny him in front of the people because he saw the persecution in which Jesus had to go through it. Sometimes in dealing with pains in life, we just don't want to deal with it and we'll do anything to get out of it. And then there was one that betrayed him and that because of the riches of the world, he was bought out, he was sold out because he did not know and understand the fullness of the Lord after what would happen with the crucifixion, not believing totally in the word. So I'm praying right now, let us understand that there will be some pains that we'll go through in life but keep on progressing with the Lord because he'll dry all your tears away and understand that although this world may try to give you things that will cause you to turn your back on the Lord, there's nothing greater than having the Lord on his side. At the time, even though that was happening, Jesus sat there at the table and knew what would happen. And he sat with those to give clarity that on this side, this will be the last time, but we shall meet again and sup in heaven. And he prayed over the bread and he prayed over the wine. And those that were with him, they ate the bread and they drank the wine. Afterwards, they went out to a Mount of Olives. Amen. I don't know what you're going to do with the rest of the evening of your day. Amen. But I pray that you keep the Lord on your life and transition and change and realize and put into place things that is worth it and things that is not worth it. Amen. God bless you. Looking forward to seeing you next week. Come on, let's celebrate. Amen. Our visual audience. Amen. Thank God for you. Amen.